everyone, it's Jack and Ross from Cultaholic.com here. It's Monday morning. Uh, how was your weekend? Thrilling. Yeah? Yeah, mine was... Well, it was missing one thing, and that was a healthy dose of wrestling news, to be honest with you. Yes, correct. Everyone needs a healthy dose of wrestling news to help the, the sugar go down. That's right. Don't worry, we've got three big stories coming up, so let's... Get straight to the headlines. First of all, an injured WWE superstar returned to the ring this weekend at a house show. Next up, we take a look at some reported plans that could potentially spell out a big storyline for Fastlane. And finally, a health update on Harley Race following comments made by Ric Flair. Right, so first of all, let's go to the house show from uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota, where Mustafa Ali returned to the ring. And not just that, but it says he had a match here. Against Daniel Bryan. Against Daniel Bryan. For the WWE Championship, which you've... Things that are believed online could have been one of the big fast lane or WrestleMania matches if he didn't get injured. Yeah, well, this is encouraging news for Mustafa Ali fans because it seems as though he'll factor into the main event scene even once the whole storyline currently has played out. But at the same time, I might be reading way too much into this, but do you think this is a sign that Kofi's not going to win the belt? Oh, I think it's a bit too much <laughs> yeah, to read into that. Um, I just think this was a, a nice little moment for a house show crowd. He came back, had a match, didn't win. Everyone went home happy. It's interesting though, isn't it? Because obviously we've read that Kofi Kingston's just literally been put into where Mustafa Ali was going to be before that the mounting injury problems yeah. ruled them out of the elimination chamber. Well, I think it's all it's, it's weird how things work out because it's definitely worked out for the better. Because I know it's been his promos with a phone backstage and stuff out out in the snow have been fantastic, but Mustafa Ali hasn't connected like Kofi has over the past few weeks. No, it's, it, even though they've put Kofi in the story and even though the early stages of the story might have played out the same as they would have done, because it's Kofi and he's got all the history and everything, yeah, you're right, I think it's, I think it's ended up hitting a lot harder. Um, but Vince is a massive fan. I think I saw a podcast that Mustafa was almost like, Vince is very impressed with how he can get people to feel sorry for him. Right. So he's going to be a big star, you'd think, for this year. Maybe yeah. not now, but maybe in the summer. You well, he know. seems to have just skipped the mid card. Yeah. <laughs> he's gone from 205 Live. <laughs> just to the well, yeah. He's the heart or the soul of 205 Live? Uh, he was the heart of the believe, heart. Yeah. Cedric was the soul. Um, but the thing about Ali as well is um, I remember looking at the betting odds on some side for the next US champion after um, it was before our truth had won it. And uh, Ali was up there for that as well, so he could always take a step back. It's a nice fit, isn't after it? After WrestleMania, it is, yeah. Uh, but I think Andrade is still in the mix. That would be a nice team. series of matches Andrade versus Mustafa Ali. It would, oh, yeah. There's your oh. summer program, WWE. Oh. <laughs> free pr printing money yes next up let's go over to figure four online where they believe that they have uncovered some plans for fast lane apparently the current plan is for a shield reunion including dean ambrose not just roman reigns and seth rollins but even dean ambrose who looks like a separate part of the group at the moment after raw but it looks as though at fast lane he could be welcomed back into the fold well there was a little, a little bit of ball tickling on last week's raw dean ambrose getting beaten down by the the new shield the better shield as i like to call them uh, <laughs> both baron corbin Bobby Lashley and Drew McIntyre and obviously Seth and Elias as well. Need to throw him in there as well. And then uh, Roman and Seth came down, saved the day, went back up the aisle, had an awkward stare down, yeah. hinting at many t-shirt sales to come. <laughs> um, yes, whether or not the whole Dean Ambrose... I mean, it's been it's been hotly debated whether the Dean Ambrose release things are real or fake or a shoot. I'm going fake at the minute. Okay. At the minute. From um, what we know, it's fake. I'm going still real, but we'll see. Um, but regardless of that, you think you think that they'd like to do it before WrestleMania, even if he wasn't leaving, just because it's WrestleMania. And it would be. A but then it's interesting. We we're saying this last week because we? Seth, Seth's got a match. He's not going to do double duty when he's got yes. the beast to contend with. Yeah, it's true. What would they do with the Shield sort of reform, but not together on the card? It's a tricky one. Uh, also, the it's written here as well um, from the Observer's report that. Um, that uh, Elias could potentially be joining the, the heel team and Strowman could be joining the face team of a, of a proposed match. Yeah. Uh, I think that I think there was a new story last week where it was one of those things where there was like a leaked image or the venue had been advertising it or something where there was a big like four on five handicap match or something. Oh no, it was three on, on two. Three on two. Oh, yeah, it right. was the three bodies minus Elias against uh, Roman and Seth, which I guess is where Dean Ambrose would sort of, way hey, hello yeah. lads, I'm here to help you. Come on, let's have some fun. Yeah. yeah, I think that, I think that sort of makes sense. I'm getting, I'm getting though, sort of bad reminders of, do you remember that match? And people enjoyed it at the time. When Angle joined the Shield, and they murdered Braun Strowman by putting him in a bin, in a in a lorry, in a yeah bin garbage wagon. truck. Yeah, good. He, he, went truck. he went around America for seven days, <laughs> and then somehow ended up at the same place Raw was, and came out of the back of the same truck. It was amazing. I thought it was a different. I thought it was a different <laughs> truck as well. It was great that. 
Um, I'm getting a bit worried about that. It's sort of a, a, an excuse. The Shield versus some heels. But at the same time, I mean, it's not going to be about who their opponent is, is it? It's going to be about... Yeah, it's just the timing's really weird because obviously Seth's busy. Yeah. So how are we going to do that? Maybe Roman and Dean won't have WrestleMania matches. Or maybe they'll have a tag match. They can't not have the big know, dog on yeah. WrestleMania. Jesus I Christ. I also before... Um, we forget to mention as well, Sean Waltman's been talking about some potential changes that he was told about the Hall of Fame ceremony via, I think it was Mark Arana, who said that um, not only will there be a more like tight limit on the length of speeches, Amen. but also that they might be getting away with induction speeches all together and just be mm. like, here or in the Hall of Fame, do your speech, but none, none are like their best mate waffling on for a bit. Yeah. What do you think? Definitely got to cap the time limits. Yeah. Definitely. Can't have Hillbilly Jim again, again, again. <laughs> the, the ceremony, I think, is too long. I think, I am personally think, it, you could just, last hour of Raw, do the Hall of Fame. Oh. Get everyone in there. Have five or six entries, give them ten minutes each. Everyone's happy. La, 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 la. I just think it's way too long in the current, last year was a joke. The year before was a bit of a joke. But yeah, it's nice to see people come back, and it's always interesting to see who's getting, like, when Jim Cornette came back, well, he got a, obviously him coming back into the fold is it's a it's a big deal because yeah. of what he's been saying over the past few years and whatnot. Yeah. So it's always interesting to see who's going to induct them, what they're going to say. But it's just the time needs to be, you know. It does. And it, you know, Goldberg would like like he'd be like that, wouldn't he? I know, <laughs> but like, but the I agree with you. I think there does need to be a limit. But I like the induction speeches. I like finding out who's going to induct certain people. I think it adds a certain thing to the show. I remember I like when someone like. Like when Christian inducts Edge or whatever, yeah. and they do a few little ribs oh, from stories Funny. on the road and, and stuff. the Dudley boys put a harmless production guy through a table. <laughs> I forgot all about that. <laughs> but it worked oh, ways of use. Hall of Fame needs more of that. More yeah. of the, like, when, like when Foley pinned Jericho finally. I finally, yeah. Him. That was a good Sam moment. Sam Punk was the referee. Yeah. Good was. moments like that are welcome. It's just the, the hill, no offence, Hillbilly Jim. But hearing you go on for 40 minutes, just, you know, nobody wants that, do they? The one I remember <laughs> is um, Mr. T's. Oh, that he was got fantastic. He was told to go away, wasn't Kane he? Kane came out, I think. Told about played his Kane's mom. music. <laughs> told about his mom for half an hour. Yeah. Everyone wants. Yeah. But you know, um, I think I think that this could be true because I can't I couldn't think who was gonna induct DX. They're all in there. They're all in DX. Yeah. Like I'd, I mean the one member that hasn't been inducted is not there anymore. Yeah. He's dead unfortunately. Rick yeah. Rude. Yeah, so who who could do it? Um I'd, I'd the greatest rival of all time, Spirit Squad. Vince McMahon. Oh, Vince McMahon, <laughs> right. Yeah. And finally, uh, in some more serious news, a health update uh, regarding Harley Race, because I don't know if you heard last week, but uh, Ric Flair, during a, a Q&A session in Atlantic City, sort of, well, I, I don't want to say revealed, because it's turned out it's not true, but sort of put his foot in it a little bit, maybe talked more than he should have about something that maybe didn't concern him too much. But he said, he basically implied, he said that uh, Harley Race was sadly fighting a terminal lung cancer, but since then, uh, David Marquez, he was the promoter from Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, uh, he's confirmed that Harley Race sadly does have lung cancer and we wish him a full recovery, of course, but uh, he says that it's actually not terminal, he's, it's being treated and he's being supervised by doctors. Uh, he's still very active and appreciates everyone's concerns. So, um, it's sort of good and bad news, really, in one go, isn't it? It's a lot better than what Ric Flair was saying, that's yes, for sure. Yes. So, yeah. All the best to Harley Race. I mean, it's been over the last few years. He's had mountain health issues. I think he had a massive surgery on his back and his neck mm. and something else. Where was it? He's, oh no, he um, broke his leg. Sorry, he broke his leg here. It says falling a fall at home. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, wish him all. What can you say? Just I know. Wish him all the best. Yeah, absolutely. And finally, a little bit of bonus news here. Well, where have you found this picture, Ross? This was on Reddit this morning. Uh, apparently, a fan at a live event gave AJ Styles a blue WWE Championship, and I've included this in the lighter part of the news. Because could this be the future once Daniel Bryan loses his? This gives me such fear, Ross. This. It's terrible, isn't it? I don't like it. No offence to the fan who spent many hours putting that together, because it looks fantastic from a production standpoint. Yes. It's just the blue doesn't work for me, and nor does the red. The idea of having the WWE Championship as a brand, as a raw or sm as a red or blue belt to me is wrong. Yeah. It's wrong. It's a very basic, basic bitch thing. <laughs> um, it's, uh, do you think they'd do it? Yeah. Oh. Imagine the toys that sell. Why? Because they've blue. got all they've got the work out of the black version. Now bring the blue on one, and then they get loads of new toy sales. But well, how long would the blue one last for? As long as this current bland brand lasts last. Really? For. It's oh, be, hasn't it? God, I just don't like the idea of it. Love the vegan belt at the minute. Yes, That's hilarious. But that sure. that can't stay once he loses it, surely. No, 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 it can't. But but then who? But then how do they bring back the? 
And I've been wondering this as well. When he set it on fire? When he <laughs> oh, they're going to set it on fire, aren't they? <laughs> when he loses it, then the person's moment, if it is a first time winner like Kofi or someone, they'll be celebrating with the vegan belt, yeah. and it'll be a bit. It'll forever be remembered as. as that. Uh, yeah, it's not the way they dreamt it when they were a child, were they? Holding <laughs> up some hemp. But why not? Yeah, I like. Uh, yeah, wait. Why not? Yeah, maybe a gl glimpse into the future. We never. I know. don't like. I don't like. We'll it. have to see how things play out. Should mention as well. Big shout out to Richard Tubman before we leave as well. Oh God! What a weekend he's had. Cultaholic's most famous member. Yeah, absolutely. The editor who does the WTF moments and the straight to hell's. Basically everything I do and more. Uh, had a big tweet. He did a funny Stone Cold Steve Austin thing that we can't show right now. And Austin retweeted it twice. Because, in, 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 as Richard Tubber put it, he's a mad bastard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he said, to be fair, Austin and him had a little chat in the aftermath. They should get a room. It was getting too much. It was great. Um, Austin tweeted it once and then tweeted it again saying, like, one more round. Or yeah, something like why that. the hell not? Ain't <laughs> the town red state. Does he know how tweets work? I don't know. <laughs> it would appear not. But yeah, well done to Richard Tubman, yeah. the most famous member of Cultaholic. Fair play. Um, <laughs> thanks very much for watching this news update. I've been Jack from Cultaholic.com. This has been Ross. You can follow me on Twitter at Jack the Jobber. I'm at Ross on Raskin. Uh, our Patreon is patreon.com forward slash Cultaholic. And never forget, if you haven't already, to hit subscribe and to join us.